This is a great activity to do anytime. If you're looking for an icebreaker activity or something to do on the first day or the first week, this is perfect. It helps question formation, which is always an issue. It helps with answering questions. It helps with vocabulary and even pronunciation too, right? And I like to add these two activities together and these two games together. The first one I like to do is 20 questions. And then after that, once the energy for 20 questions starts to die down, then I change it and kind of invert the game and play a game that's called, well, I call it, Who Am I? Before 20 questions, I like to teach question formation or at least review question formation, right? Especially, is it, does it, can it, those basic three questions. Is it plus adjective? Can it plus verb? Does it plus verb, right? But first, let's take a look at 20 questions. If you're not familiar with it, I will start, I'll stand up in front of the classroom and I'll say, okay, I'm thinking of something. You get 20 questions to decide what it is. And depending on the age and how many students are in your classroom and the general idea, they might uh, take a minute to warm up to the game and to get involved. No problem. Just encourage them and help them come along. One trick that I like to do is I like to go on the whiteboard or the chalkboard or whatever you have in your classroom. And every time they ask a question, mark one, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and tell them that they have 20 questions maximum. That kind of visual and like the countdown, it adds some pressure, especially after they get to 10. And then they'll start really trying to guess. Okay, so I'm thinking of an object, and the point is to ask questions from the most broad to the most narrow, right? So uh, is it real? Is it fictional? Is it an animal? Is it alive? Things like that, and then kind of narrow down the questions. Teach them strategy, how to come up with the correct solution, right? You start at the broad and go into the narrow and you narrow it down to the more detailed questions. They might, you'll be surprised that they, they might not know this. All of these things that we take for granted because we've done these games a lot or something, we forget that people, especially younger people, they don't have like a good system and order in, of order in their brain. Their brain isn't fully developed, so we kind of have to guide them. That's part of teaching, right? And that's an Easter egg lesson that we're teaching them in this. Then after that, I like to invert the game essentially and have them get into groups of five or six people. And you're going to give them little pieces of paper, right? You're going to rip up or have them make little pieces of paper like this. And everybody is going to secretly write a word on the paper, put it face down, hand it to the person next to them. And then that person will put it on their forehead. And you can either, you know, I'm kind of sweating. It's a little hot here, so it's sticking. If you want, lick it and stick it <laughs> on your head. By the way, a pro tip. Every time a new word comes up in class, write it on the board, right? You should have on, I've told you this before, on one side of the board, draw a line and write all the new vocabulary words that come up in a class. For example, to say yours is a uh, yours e, right? Yours is upside down. Teach that everything along the way. Teach these things, right? So they know how to communicate what they want and write it on the board. Okay, so the essentially the idea is I have this on my head, and instead of asking the questions, is it, can it, does it, and then the more advanced the students are, your classes are the different kinds of questions they will ask. But for this game, you're not asking, is it? You're asking, am I? Because this is me, right? And you would say, am I alive? Am I a living thing? And they'd say yes or no. If the answer is yes, then I get to ask again, uh, can I fly? No. If the answer is no, by the way, my card is... I don't know if you can see that. A lion. 
Can I fly? No. So then it passes to the next person, right? And then they ask. So the idea is that whoever guesses their thing first, uh, well, they guess until everyone guesses their thing, right? You could do it like that, have whoever guesses first wins or something like that. You adapt these for your classes and your style, how you want to do it in your class. But these are the two basic games I like to put together. If you do them both, they could last, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, depending on how much you have to teach question formation and correct. Then after the lesson, after the games, you can review the vocabulary that you wrote on the board or uh, review question formation or have a little debriefing. Uh, what was the most creative uh, question you had in your group or what was the most, uh, the most difficult thing to guess, right? Things like that. Take these activities, do them together, do them separately, whatever you want. But here are two activities that I love doing in my classes and students always have a good time. Keep teaching and keep learning. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.